friends welcome to our youtube channel for psychiatry education forum academy i am dr harvinder singh i am dr satendra palkar and we are the creator of psychiatry education forum academy so the video that you will watch right now is a very short clip from one of the chapters of the academy so that you can get an insight as to what we do in our academy so please watch it and we will see you at the end of this video lecture but let's see the mechanism right what is this medication what does it contain how does it work so let's break it down so what is ovality so this is a combination of these two medication so dextromethorphan and bupropion so let's see how these, why they use two combination. Bupropion is already an antidepressant. Um, why will you add dextromethorphan to bupropion? Or I should say, why will you add bupropion to dextromethorphan? And the reason is this. First, let's talk about dextromethorphan. Like, how does it work? So friends, the basic mechanism is working on the glutamate pathway. So we know that glutamate is one of the major excitatory neurotransmitter in CNS, right? So with depression, we need excitation. We need these excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate to go up. And ketamine is one of those uh, medication that works on this pathway. But dextromethorphan is an NMDA receptor antagonist. It's non-selective, non-competitive NMDA receptor antagonist. Actually, I can make a full lecture on this, but there are so many theories how these medications that blocks NMDA receptors helps with depression. One of the major theory is that uh, in major depressive disorder, Glutamate is reduced in our dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and some other areas of prefrontal cortex. So we have to increase that glutamate, glutamate there. And one of the way uh, we can do that is by altering the inhibitory tones of interneurons. Now, I wish I have a, um, a way to draw this. But you know, there is a presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron, right? That's how they co uh, communicate uh, through synapse by releasing neurotransmitters. But there is also an interneuron on the presynaptic um, neuron. It's a GABA interneuron. And there are NMDA receptors on that. So by antagonizing the NMDA receptors on interneuron, these medicines alter the inhibitory tones of the interneuron. So they're like order receptors, but I don't know if I should call them, call this as an order receptor. But by uh, altering the inhibitory tone of these interneuron, we, uh, these medication blocks the uh, interneuron activity, thereby causing disinhibition of the pyramidal neuron and it enhances the glutamatergic firing. So that's one of the theories how glutamate uh, goes up. And the other is it acts on postsynaptic NMDA receptor directly and causes this uh, glutamatergic increase. So that's first mechanism how dextromethorphan works. And I think dextromethorphan is the main medication here with the mechanism for ovality. But there are other ways dextromethorphan helps. First is NMDA receptor antagonist, right? The second is, it is also a sigma-1 receptor antagonist. What? You will say, sigma-1, right? That's new. Well, it's not new in research. Uh, there are so many studies which uh, have shown that these sigma receptors have a potential for the antidepressant medication in terms of fast onset of action as a uh, this produces rapid modulation of the serotonergic system in the dorsal raphe nucleus and the glutamatergic transmission in the hippocampus. So antagonizing sigma-1 receptor does glutamate and monoamine signaling. But I just want to make one more point. You know, it works on the serotonin system as well through sigma-1. And we need to be mindful of that. 
especially with the risk of serotonin syndrome with these medication when you combine this with something that has a serotonergic property or you give higher doses of these medication. This was just a segue, but the second mechanism is sigma-1 receptor antagonist. And uh, I was reviewing literature on sigma-1 receptor and the data says you need to higher dosing of dextromethorphan for this action on sigma-1. I think that's why they chose the dosing uh, that I will talk in a few minutes. But that's the likely mechanism number two by antagonizing sigma-1 receptors. And third is it is a non-selective sel uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So you see there are two mechanisms here that increases serotonin. So be cautious of serotonin syndrome risk at higher doses or when other medications are added to a validity. Now, moving on to our next medication combination, bupropion here. So we all know what bupropion does, right? Everyone has used this medication. It's a selective norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor. But the main reason why they added bupropion is this. It's a uh, cytochrome P450 2D6 inhibitor. But why is that important? It's important because dextromethorphan gets broken down very fast by cytochrome P450 2D6 uh, uh, enzymes. So bupropion blocks that. Thereby, it uh, makes dextromethorphan available for longer duration Thereby, we can see all the benefit on the left side through the mechanism of action. And when you give these, uh, when they give this combination, the steady state plasma concentration uh, is achieved within eight days. Um, so it's a very quick um, reaching uh, medication. So friends, this is a basic mechanism of action of this medicine. I hope this was not confusing. I tried to put diagrams here, but then it was making the slide so much confusing. That's why I decided to do it this way. So this is the mechanism of action. Thank you for watching this video. If you find it clinically relevant, please join our Academy membership. And please note, this membership is only for medical professionals so that you all can stay clinically updated. Please go to psychiatryeducationforum.com to learn more. I hope we will see you there soon. You all take care and bye for now. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>